The 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics are well underway as the lead sponsor Toyota is set to debut their incredible EV lineup and their next generation solid state battery technology. These batteries are expected to give over 600 miles of electric range and zero to 100% charging and just, wait, hold on a sec. <laughs> what? You're kidding. Well, um, sorry guys, apparently the 2020 Olympics have been delayed until next year, so a 2021 Summer Olympics. All jokes aside, we won't be seeing Toyota's work on the solid state batteries until next summer, right? When they're going to do this whole Olympic thing all over again. And they'll have the entire world's attention then, so it would be a good time to do it. However, we got some juicy new details on their cutting edge battery technology during a recent interview with Automotive News. And in today's video, we'll discuss the current state of their solid state battery technology and what it means in real world usage and when it's likely to be available. Welcome back Luxurious Fleet. If you're new, my name is Kirk and this channel is dedicated to Japanese autos. Subscribe, hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos on Japanese EVs. All right, let's get on over to automotive news. Keiji Kaita, that is the guy that they interviewed for this. He is the lead developer in their batteries. He works a lot with Panasonic. If you guys aren't up to speed on solid state batteries, they are like the holy grail of battery technology. They're supposed to bring low cost, fast charging, and crazy, crazy high amounts of power density and energy density. They're also not very vulnerable to extreme temperatures and promise two to three times the energy density of existing lithium ion batteries. Solid state batteries replace a liquid electrolyte with a solid and are expected to be lighter, longer lasting, safer, and eventually cheaper than today's batteries. But there are challenges. For one, because of safety and durability issues, engineers have yet to harness a battery's true potential for high energy densities. To counter these limitations, we're looking at how we might adjust the anode or other materials we are trying to reduce disadvantages that are found. They are sealed in pouches to keep out moisture. They're also plate-like sheets about the size and thickness of a spiral notebook. Charging the prototype battery from zero to full takes less than 15 minutes. Toyota is focusing on using a sulfur-based electrolyte because it seems to facilitate more efficient transfer of lithium ions between the electrodes. They're having a hard time keeping the density really, really high while maintaining a flexible nature of this battery. In manufacturing the cells is very difficult. It has to be an ultra dry, non-aqueous environment. Currently, they're made in compact transparent booths called glove boxes where workers reach into boxes through rubber gloves sealed around access openings. And that is a big problem for mass production. Toyota is developing the solid state batteries through Prime Planet Energy and Solutions Inc., a joint venture with Panasonic that started operations in April and has about 5,100 employees, including 2,400 at a Chinese subsidiary. One of the joint venture's missions is to manufacture and sell automotive solid state batteries. Toyota is still on track for limited production by 2025. Complicating Toyota's push is its goal of developing batteries that keep more than 90% of their original performance in the long run up to 30 years. Now, I got my notes out and I, I almost came up with a spreadsheet for you guys today, but I don't think I have enough information to be able to, I, I could always come up with something, but my notes today are going to be fairly significant, I think, for this topic. So Lexus unveiled the LF30 concept at the 2019 Tokyo Motor Show. It was their first ever electrified concept to my knowledge. And it's a beautiful car, gold wing doors, in-wheel motors, lots of advanced technology in it. One of the secret things that they, they really didn't talk a whole, a whole lot about was the solid state battery that was in it. I feel like they were planning to unveil that like right now, this summer of 2020. The LF30, they were able to give us some specs. So the LF30 stands for 2030 and like the year 2030 where they plan on having a vehicle like this actually exist. It doesn't sound absolutely perfect to me. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The power is impressive. It's 536 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque. It's not going to be like, a Tesla beater by any means, but with that sort of power, you really don't need a whole lot more. I mean, 
just to be like for safety reasons. So, <laughs> but people always want more power and that vehicle has over 500 of immediate power and torque. But what about the battery pack that they said that was on the LF30? Well, they said it was 110 kilowatt hours, which is massive. To my knowledge, that's bigger than any current Tesla in production. Of course, the Cybertruck will have much, probably double or triple that, that battery capacity. But 110 kilowatt hours for a small, like four or five passenger vehicles, a ton. The, the strange thing is, is that they said it only had 310 miles of range. And we see Teslas with much less battery pack in today's market with non-solid state batteries getting equal or equal to that range, if not better in some situations. So why is the range so low on that prototype? Why weren't they just like, oh, 500 miles, 600 miles? Because in theory, it could provide that. It makes you wonder, right? It really makes you wonder. Perhaps 30 years of that battery lasting and 90% of the original performance in the long run is the key here. Yeah, could they make a 500 mile solid state battery? Yeah, but they want it to last forever. And maybe that's just for the Lexus brand because Lexus has really founded their reputation on quality and longevity. So maybe they have a higher quality or let's say, let's say a slightly detuned battery for longevity, 90% over 30 years. That's the type of goals that they're trying to come out with right now, which doesn't seem possible based off today's technology, but who knows with this solid state technology. But yeah, I'll definitely see you guys in the comments below uh, about Toyota, Lexus, EVs, and batteries, but we have some additional news to talk about here, and it involves the Supra, and we'll talk about some Lexus stuff after that. Now over at MAG-X, manual transmission and GRMN edition plan coming to the Supra. A survey by the Magazine X scoop team revealed that there are manual transmission models in GRMN limited in number. Immediately after the debut, Toyota had been calling for a Supra manual transmission, but they said, of course, please try the automatic first. However, as a long awaited theory or speculation of manual transmission emerged, it seemed that the people involved in the development were more and more likely to think, yes, that's right. Now that's all we have from Mag X because they want you to buy the magazine, which I'm not going to buy the magazine because it's all gonna be in Japanese. I wouldn't be able to read it to you guys. But that gives us hope for manual transmission. Fingers crossed that Toyota does it. And what about the GRMN? Well, I think that's definitely a strong possibility. And I talked about that in a previous video. Make sure to watch it around my face where it talks about using the 500 plus horsepower M5 slash M3 engine that is only found in the competition versions of that vehicle. And that would be in limited production last year of the Supra. And they're gonna cost more than probably the equivalent BMW models. And we have some new updates for the Lexus NX for its last production year before the redesign next year. And I've made a couple videos already talking about how the Venza is a better buy or it's definitely worth considering if you're in the market for an NX, you would have to de determine yourself after trying both of them, looking at the prices as well to see it, what would be a better fit for your needs. But, but we have some updates for the 2021 NX. Let's see if these updates are going to be enough to compel buyers to switch more to the Lexus side compared to that very, very impressive Venza. All right, new standard features. We finally have blind spot monitor rear cross traffic alert as standard. Thank God we see that in the Sienna, we see that in the Venza as well. It's nice that Lexus, the premium brand is finally doing that. Updated low profile wiper blade design. No one would ever notice, notice that. What, I mean, that's a major update for the 2021. Just keep that in mind. Power folding auto dimming reverse tilt mirrors. Again, I haven't seen any NXs that don't have that. So that's pretty much standard. Same, with, same thing with blind spot monitors. So they're just probably increasing the price of the NX just a little bit, including these things as standard. And then home link system move to navigation, whatever. That's a whatever. New optional features, updated Mark Levinson amplifier. Mark Levinson was finally added, apparently you still can't get it in Canada, but it was finally added to the 2021 model year of the NX's, actually it was the 2020 model year. 2019 special edition, black line edition, had the Mark Levinson for the first time here in the States. I know that Mark Levinson system has been available elsewhere and you guys also get heads up display panel, uh, sunroof, et cetera. But here in the States, Mark Levinson is new on the NX. You're never going to see it on there. Um, 
they must be having some issues with the current Mark 11, or should say the previous year's Mark 11 10 amplifier. Maybe it's overheating or shorting out, giving them uh, too many issues. But there's also a possibility that they updated the Mark 11 amplifier to get ready and test out for the updated Mark Levinson system coming out in the 2022 NX, which like I said, is gonna be redesigned. And that 2022 NX is going to be featuring Mark Levinson in a much better, more available manner. Like we saw in the ES redesign, the ES Mark Levinson on like a 2018 model was like only on an ultra luxury or you would have to custom build. It's very, very, very hard to find. But when you move to the 2019 year, you can find them on ESs that don't even have the navigation package. Um, you can see it in the sport package without the navigation, still get Mark Levinson. It just depends on your region and how Lexus builds it, but it's much, much more accessible and it's not totally out of the price range of the average ES buyer. And that's what's probably gonna happen with the 2022 NX. Not only are they gonna boost the power, the wattage, uh, the speakers that are in there, uh, and include more clarity, but they're gonna make it more readily available for the mass market. And I think that's really important because most people still don't know, even if they've owned Lexuses, they still don't know what Mark Levinson is and they still don't care. So Lexus having that secure rights, exclusive rights to Mark Levinson in the vehicle automotive landscape, they need to take advantage of that. Have that, un even if people don't know what it is, they can get used to hearing a specific name, Mark Levinson. If you haven't seen my video on Mark Levinson, uh, watch around my face. And I definitely did not plan on talking this much about Mark Levinson in today's video. We got some updated colors. They added Nori Green Pearl as an exterior paint. They removed Blue Vortex Metallic exterior paint. That color is pretty ugly. Now you guys might think Nori Green's ugly as well. It's okay. It's all right. Definitely not gonna get a lot of buyers to buy. Like Nori Green sits around on most NXs and UXs. Interior changes, horn pad change. So they change the covering of the horn on the steering wheel and tachometer red zone modified. So maybe they increased the rev, re, revs a little bit higher. Now we do get some new special editions and like most special edition Lexus vehicles, they're not really special. No one really seeks them out to buy them. Not even rest in peace GS, not even the black line edition GS uh, that kind of signaled the cancellation of the GS uh, this summer. But that special edition GS had some luggage <laughs> that made it extra special. And so does this NX black line edition. So there's a zero Halliburton luggage and there's the new color. For the NX F Sport this year, it's called Grecian Water. We first heard of this color on the debut of the 2021 IS that should be coming out in just a couple months time from now. But there it is. This is the first time we've seen it. And instead of going over the US page, Lexus also gets it in Japan and they have better pictures over the Japanese website. Why, why wouldn't they? It seems like their special editions are a little bit more special. So they have a spice and chic interior and a cool and bright interior. Oh, and one last thing. So on that, that black line edition here in the United States for the first time ever, we're able to get an F Sport on the hybrid trim. So I know in most markets around the world, uh, they're able to get the F Sport package on the hybrid. That is something that's gonna come around more and more often. The first time we saw that on a Lexus here in the States, to my knowledge, was the UX 250, 250H uh, with an F Sport package that you can get on top of that. Now it's coming to the NX, which is a sign of things to come right? Because we know that 2022 NX is going to be very sporty and they're going to offer that F Sport package throughout the lineup, potentially. Definitely on the 350s, uh, whether it's a 350 hybrid or the 350 turbo. So yeah, the updates on the NX are definitely not going to sway potential Venza buyers more over to the Lexus side. I feel like it's just Lexus trying to do anything to gain a little bit of attention on the NX on its final year of this production model that they've had since 20, late 2014. Manual transmission Supra can't come soon enough and solid state batteries, guys. We're still a long ways off. 2025, it would be like the best case scenario. I honestly see it later in this, I almost said century, later in this decade, uh, maybe 2027 to 2030. I think that's a more realistic time frame. but who knows? All these battery manufacturers are pouring in billions and billions of dollars from Tesla, Panasonic, BYD, CATL, 
LG, General Motors, Volkswagen, they're all pouring insane amounts of money, billions and billions, probably trillions, let's be real, probably trillions of dollars into battery technology. And we're getting close, guys, to like a huge paradigm shift in that technology that will allow them, or the EVs, I should say, to be cheaper than internal gasoline or internal combustion engine, internal diesel engine, you, you know what I'm saying, ice cars. So we're getting close. You know, I was talking to my wife last night and I'm like, you know, I, I was thinking about, you know, 10 years from now buying, well, a little bit more than that, but buying my daughter's cars. And yeah, I'm like, well, I could just buy them an old Lexus, but at the same time, there's gonna be a whole new landscape of cars in 10 years from all sorts of different battery electric cars, possibly plug-ins still at that point. I think hybrids are really gonna start phase, phasing out in the next five to seven years. Um, and then internal combustion engines really only being left maybe for the cheapest end cars, maybe, and then also on your large pickup trucks and things like that. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching, arigato. If you wanna head over to my membership page, check that out. There's lots of cool perks that are now available for you guys uh, by becoming a member of the Luxurious Fleet. And thank you guys for helping me over 40,000 at this point. This is so much fun and I can't wait to give you more and more news, more and more content. Oh, I have so much stuff coming for you. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Peace out.